What is up guys, Tim Murray here. Today we're going to be looking at my Warm With Gecko 6 build in depth. Plus I'll show off a few sound demos too, so stick around. So a few months back I was trawling through the internet after work and decided to randomly look at the Warmoth website for inspiration. I'd always liked the idea of doing a DIY kit guitar even way back to 2008. My dad had always said that we should build a DIY kit together as it'd be a cool father-son activity and he'd teach me how to do all of the soldering, sanding, painting, etc. However, a sad end to that story, my dad got unwell in 2009 and then passed away in 2012 so I never actually got to build one with him. Doing a kit build meant a lot to me because of that. Also, because I have a tendency to aim straight for the top model of things, I put a fair bit of money into this first build. I wanted the kit to be like THE bass I used in my studio recordings, a real hard working instrument, and it turned out amazing with a couple of little quirks. Jumping into the specs of this thing, the body is a Gecko 6 bass model from Warmoth. I didn't actually customise this with their builder, this was from the in-stock inventory. It is made from walnut with a gloss black to clear burst finish. It has EMG size pickup routing, all of the holes were pre-drilled for the electronics, and a Hipshot A style bridge, which I had to buy myself. I initially wanted Bartolini size pickup routes and a satin finish, but this was going to cost a little bit more and take a lot more time, for something that wasn't really a deal breaker for me. The neck is a 5 piece Wenge neck with bloodwood stripes and an ebony fretboard. It has 24 gold jumbo frets and a Graftec tusk nut. Once again, this was from Warmoth's in stock inventory page as I absolutely loved the look of the Bloodwood Stripes. Also, Warmoth usually leave the frets off when they put items up, meaning you can still buy a pre-made neck, but you can still choose between fret sizes and types, or even just go blind fretless. The pickups are Dingwall FD3 pickups, made by Nordstrand, or as they like to call them, Dingstrand Nordwall fixes. They are passive split coil pickups that sound fantastic. They're quite bright and transient which really helps the bass cut through the mix or excel at percussive techniques like slapping. I'll go over the wiring of these shortly. The bridge is a Hipshot A style 6 string bridge. I opted for the brass bridge to balance the weight of the bass out a bit and I got it in a black finish to complement the other hardware. The tuners are Hipshot licensed ultralight tuners with open backs. No issues with these at all. I wanted to chuck one of their extended tuner kits on for easy drop tuning but man they're expensive for what they are. Given that this is an extended range bass anyway, there really isn't a need for one anyway. Moving on to the electronics, there is a dark glass tone capsule inside the bass which allows me to boost or cut preset frequency ranges. However, unlike most bass preamps, this one doesn't have a treble control. Instead, it has a low mid and a high mid control which I kind of prefer. Seems to work really well with the pickups. For the controls, I have the bass wired up like a jazz bass with added active controls. I have two CTS 500k push-pull potentiometers which control the volume of each pickup individually, rather than a master volume and a blend. One of these push-pull pots changes the pickups from parallel wiring to series wiring, which changes the tone slightly, mainly with how the low end is picked up, and slightly increases the output. The other push-pull is an active passive switch, which toggles between sending the pickups to the dark glass preamp or straight to the jack. I don't have a passive tone control installed in this bass however, which might be something that I add later on. I feel that a passive tone control might be a nice addition to attenuate some of the highs that crank through these pickups. I can just pre-EQ these in my signal chain, so no biggie in the meantime. Small downside to me doing my own wiring, in parallel mode, with both volumes rolled off completely, the bridge pickup still comes through slightly. Could be a bad solder somewhere, maybe a bad pot, but I'm definitely leaning towards it being something that I've fucked up. But I'm honestly not bothered about it. I'm playing the bass to make sound, not play it silently, and if I wanted to mute it, I can pop it into series mode with the knobs rolled off anyway. Does that mean that with only the neck pickup I still get the bridge pickup leading through? Yeah, probably, but only tiny amounts that don't drastically affect the tone in any negative way. I also found out through this build that knobs and potentiometers don't have a universal nope. standard for shaft size. Instead, there are at least two, just to be an absolute pain in the ass. What caused me to discover this was that I bought a 50k stack potentiometer from the US, so I could have the mid controls from the dark glass preamp stacked on top of each other. However, the stack knobs that I bought from guitarparts.co.nz did not fit. The hole for the shaft was too small. After googling knobs that would fit, they either didn't match the style of the other knobs I already had, or shipping would cost me four times the value of the knobs anyway. One of the many flaws of living in a small country that is at least a three hour flight away from anything else in the frickin' world. All I did to fix this was drill out the hole to the correct size, however I mustn't have done this at a right angle due to having to do it with a hand drill rather than a drill press. 
so one of the knobs is slightly wonky. No biggie, I can always just buy some replacement ones from the same website and actually buy a drill press mount this time. I did initially want to put a time lapse of the build in this part of the video, however I may have set up the camera incorrectly and filled up the SD card with pictures of me putting things on the workbench. Yeah. So here's some sound clips. Base settings will be overlaid in the video. In conclusion, this bass is wicked, and even with a couple of little quirks here and there, this has quickly become my go-to bass for recording. It has also made me realise how damn fun it is doing these project builds, so I might already have a cheaper Warmoth guitar build order on the way as well. This time I'll set up the time lapse correctly, I swear. So stay tuned. So thanks for watching, to me out. Fuck.